This week, investigation into the fighter combat adventures aeroscam reveals even stranger details. SpaceX is open for business, and aero organizations are appealing to President Obama. I am Ashley Hale. Welcome to the Tuesday bi-weekly edition of Airborne here on Aero TV. Well, as you recall earlier last week, ANN has uncovered what appears to be an enormous and ongoing scam, offering aerial combat flight experiences to the public for highly discounted rates on a number of daily deal marketing sites like Groupon and Living Social. These online adventures all eventually lead to the same website, Fighter Combat Adventures. Its content is either false, deceptive, or even stolen from other sites. And the fraud continues on, with more new offers popping up daily, despite Annan's complaints to the Daily Deal sites. An interesting new development was the sudden appearance of a number of new glowing reviews for the whole scheme. Reviews that ANN has investigated and found to be totally false. A search manipulation company was hired to provide the fake reviews, and when questioned, they admitted the fake reviews were commissioned by none other than well-known aero crook David Riggs, who's known to be behind much of the fighter combat adventure scam. In the meantime, the Daily Deal sites seem to be doing nothing. There is no help coming from the alphabet groups and the FAA is once again strangely silent. To learn more about the scam, log on to wwwaero newsnet And yes, there is still much more to come. You don't have to have read much about the state of air travel without having heard about the battles underway at American Airlines. APA has countered recent media reports blaming pilots for disrupting flight schedules with trivial maintenance requests and some damaging details. According to APA President Keith Wilson, our pilots are taking a prudent and cautious approach in their operational decision-making process. APA has provided a sampling of the substantive maintenance-related issues their pilots have documented in the past several days. A left engine generator failed in flight, an aircraft sustained a lightning strike. The ground proximity warning system failed in flight. A partial flight control failure. Weather radar test inoperative. A fuel leak on right wing main tank. The left landing light was damaged. A wind shear warning failure. A brake anti-skid failure. And the engine start valve failed to close. Wilson also noted, during the past year, American Airlines has sustained record FAA fines totaling $162 million for improper aircraft maintenance procedures, a strong indication that management's maintenance practices have raised concerns with regulators. A launch date has been set for the first contract resupply of the ISS by SpaceX. Tom Patton has that story. NASA managers, SpaceX officials, and international partner representatives have set Sunday, October 7th as the target launch date for the first contracted cargo resupply flight to the International Space Station under NASA's Commercial Resupply Services, or CRS, contract. It will be the first paying flight for SpaceX to the station. ISS program managers confirmed the status and readiness of the Falcon 9 rocket and its Dragon cargo spacecraft for the SpaceX CRS-1 mission as well as the space station's readiness to receive Dragon. The launch of the Dragon spacecraft will be the first of 12 contracted flights by SpaceX to resupply the space station and marks the second trip by a Dragon to the ISS following a successful demonstration mission in May. The CRS contract flights will restore an American capability to deliver and return significant amounts of cargo, including science experiments, to the orbiting laboratory. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. You're watching Airborne. When we come back, a number of aviation's alphabet groups hope to get a little help from the Obama administration.
Since its inception, Redbird Flight Simulations has been dedicated to developing new training technologies and processes in an ongoing effort to make aviation safer, more affordable, and more accessible. We're using technology to make this kind of training accessible to all flight schools of all sizes and all budgets and to democratize flying in general because we make this kind of training more accessible to people. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or a podcast, send us an email anytime to news by at aero news.net. With the current administration's attitude toward the aviation industry, we're not sure this is a promising move, but a group of 19 aviation organizations have sent a letter to President Obama calling for him to take legal action against the European Union's emission trading scheme. The group includes airline, business aviation, general aviation, and sport aviation associations, the so-called alphabet groups. In the letter dated September the 17th, the coalition asked Obama to file an Article 84 proceeding with the International Civil Aviation Organization to challenge the EU's inclusion of international aviation operations in its regulation on carbon emissions. The aviation industry has opposed the proposal because it has been developed as a unilateral regional dictate that does not promote harmonization and instead sets in motion a patchwork of separate and potentially conflicting regulations. The coalition's letter to Obama notes the industry's ongoing concern about aircraft emissions and the important work being done appropriately through ICAO to develop a global approach to emissions policy. Recently, though, China has threatened to pull orders for Airbus commercial airliners if the EU takes action against Chinese operators, prompting representatives from the four partner nations of the Airbus consortium to ask for suspension of the international provisions under the EU's emission trading scheme. The second annual Migration Flight Training Conference at Redbird's innovative Skyport will feature industry leaders Pete Bunce, CEO of Gamma. Jack Pelton, former CEO of Cessna Aircraft Company, and a number of other luminaries who will discuss the future of the flight training industry. The Migration Conference will be held October the 22nd through the 24th at Redbird Skyport in San Marcos, Texas, to gather flight training professionals interested in shaping the future of flight training. Attendees will share the latest insights on both techniques and flight training technologies, including a report from Redbird Skyport on its first year of using simulators rather than real aircraft as the core for Part 141 flight training. Breakout groups on the second day will grapple with the real-world challenges facing the industry and how technology could fit into the solutions. The event will also be the location of one of the first public discussions of ANN's Aviation Transformation Initiative, with time set aside on October 22nd, dedicated to discussing what it will take to reboot the aviation industry. Ford Island, in the heart of Pearl Harbor, is a site that many have likened to Gettysburg, Valley Forge, and the Alamo. The 4,000-foot runway, part of Naval Air Station Ford Island, from 1921 to 1961, has been part of the Pearl Harbor National Historic Landmark since 1964 and on the National Register of Historic Places since 1976. But the U.S. Navy is now proposing to cover the runway and 14 acres of adjoining land with 60,000 photovoltaic panels. 
and a move that will convert the nature and appearance of this hallowed ground to an industrial project. On December 7, 2006, the Pacific Aviation Museum opened in the first of three hangars which survived the attack on Pearl Harbor and has welcomed more than 800,000 visitors. The museum feels that the Ford Island runway, which played a key role in World War II, is one such artifact and opposes the cover-up. PAM's board of directors voted unanimously to oppose the Navy's plans to cover the runway and adjoining land with photovoltaic cells and encouraged the Navy to relocate the project to a far larger tract of Navy land at the YPO Peninsula. PAM is currently the lone voice in opposition to this initiative. This project is not at all in keeping with the significance of the historic Pearl Harbor battlefield. Museum officials said, we asked the reader to consider the hue and cry should a 60,000 panel photovoltaic project be located at Gettysburg or Valley Forge. It's Tuesday and time for another Aero Video of the Week. Right there. This week, watch a three-year-old get inspired in a big way while launching his scale model SpaceX Falcon 9. For so many of us, this is how the space bug gets its start. We've heard it before, there's an app for that. But one flight attendant wishes it weren't true. Wendy Rennell Dye, 43, a flight attendant for Horizon Air, was arrested in Oregon City on Friday evening for the theft of a passenger's iPad. A Nevada man left the iPad on a recent flight where another passenger found it and turned it over to flight attendant Dai. Unfortunately for Miss Dai, the iPad's owner had only recently downloaded the app, Find My iPad. When he activated the app, it led police to Miss Dai's home in Oregon. KSEE TV, reports the woman claims to have not have used the iPad, saying she placed it in a personal bag and had forgotten all about it. But an examination of the iPad found some of her personal information loaded on it, including a reminder of her husband's upcoming birthday. The iPad is now being returned to its owner in Reno, Nevada, and odds are Mr. Dye is not going to enjoy the happy birthday he had hoped for. Well, that's our program for Tuesday, September 25th. Quick, concise, and convenient, you're always up to date when you're airborne with Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again this Friday with another edition of Airborne.